Recently, I was thinking about my top five centerpiece fish that I've kept in nano tanks, and the number one gold standard that outperformed everyone was the honey grommy. It's got those bright, bold colors, the cool little feeler fins underneath, but most importantly, it's actually peaceful. So let's talk about why this fish is so awesome and how to take care of it. Hi, my name is Irene with Aquarium Co-op, and I think honey grommies are like the super chilled out version of a dwarf grommy. Dwarf grommies, you'll see them more often in pet stores, and I think they're more popular because they're really brightly colored. There's a lot of varieties you can choose from, but it's like a 50-50 chance of getting a nasty bully that's not gonna get along with the rest of your community tank, right? Versus a honey grommy, a lot more peaceful. They're usually smaller in size and get to about two inches or five centimeters in length. Like a lot of grommies, they have a really cool oblong shaped body, these modified ventral fins that look like two little strings or wires coming down beneath that help them feel around in their environment. And they also come in several varieties such as wild type, a gold yellow version, as well as sunset red. Males in general are more vibrant in color, especially when they're in breeding mode. Their throat and belly will actually turn this dark blue slash black color, which is really amazing to see. Versus females, a little duller in color, and I've noticed sometimes some of mine have this very faint horizontal tan stripe on them. They're originally from India and Bangladesh in slow moving waters like ponds and ditches with a lot of heavy vegetation. So you can be sure they would definitely appreciate a heavily planted tank with gentle flow. So maybe use like a sponge filter or something. Now those regions experience seasonal flooding or monsoons. So they're actually really used to those water parameters changing drastically a lot, which makes them a great hardy beginner fish. They can do anywhere from 6.0 to 8.0 pH, 74 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. And then for GH, which is water hardness, four to 18 degrees, which basically means soft to hard water, very wide range. In the wild, honey grommies like to eat little insect larvae, crustaceans, and invertebrates, so similar to betta fish. In fact, betta fish and grommies are both labyrinth fish, or anabantoids, which means they have the ability to take a gulp of air from the water surface. And because of that, a lot of anabantoids like to hang out in the upper half of an aquarium, but honestly, I found that grommies tend to go anywhere. There's food or something interesting to look at, so they are not picky at all. You can feed them pretty much any kind of omnivore community diet, whether it's pellets, flakes, rapashi gel food, frozen, freeze dried, and even live. Just anything goes for them. Now let's talk about tank size and tank mates. I mentioned before they're about two inches long, so you could theoretically keep a single one in a, let's say five or 10 gallon tank, versus if you wanna keep it as a centerpiece fish in a community setting, maybe a 20 gallon tank would be, would be better, or even two to three honey grommies together. Now there's a little bit of debate of whether they should be kept in groups. I personally haven't seen them schooling or shoaling around together as much. In fact, when I had three honey grommies in here, they didn't really hang around each other. They all were exploring different parts of the tanks at different times and would occasionally say hi, but that's about it. And then just be aware, there can be a little bit of minor squabbling among themselves, especially during meal time, I noticed. So just provide a lot of cover. In fact, honey grommies sometimes get a reputation for being a little shy, especially if there's a more dominant tank boss in the aquarium, you may have them hiding a lot. So that's another good reason to provide a lot of shelter and blockage of line of sight. The really cool thing about honey grommies is actually they're very fun to breed. I love how they are bubble nesters, where the males will create a bubble nest up at the surface of the water, similar to betta fish. He will court the female, get the female to drop her eggs, and then use his mouth to carry the eggs back up into his bubble nest. At that point, you can remove the female because that male is gonna be fiercely defending his nest. And then once the eggs hatch and then become free swimming, then you can remove the male and then raise up the fry in a grow out tank. Now they are very, very tiny. And from the research papers I've read, they lay hundreds of eggs because there's a relatively high mortality rate. So make sure you prepare lots of tiny, tiny foods like infusoria, vinegar eels, and then eventually they'll grow large enough where you can start feeding them baby brine shrimp and really boost their growth. 
Good luck with your honey gouramis and I hope you have as much fun with them as I did. Enjoy Nature Daily and I'll see you later.